why did you insert TJ into the starting lineup? What did you hope to accomplish? And it looked like whatever you wanted to accomplish, he did that. Yeah. I mean, the obvious is, is, is the obvious. Like, yeah, that's how he plays. Like, there's an injection of energy that you immediately know you're going to get with him. And, you know, you heard me talk for the previous 48 hours of, of making sure that, that our spirit didn't take a hit. And I really felt when I personally zoomed in, what can I do to help the team the most was to remind them of how good a season they have had to, to retain, maintain, increase their spirit and uh, try to focus on that as much as anything. And there's no better player to help catapult the start of the game with that mindset than TJ. And the decision was, was based on a lot of other things, but that is the main thing, just the energy and the spirit. Kai Coleman, 1400 WOMD. Brett, what is it about TJ that like he just continues to come out and fight and just give a spark to the team? What, what gives him that spark? I mean, he's got sort of unusual characteristic characteristics that that you wouldn't think like would be as successful in an NBA playoff game. And all of them, you know, equal sort of a tenacity, a heart, a commitment, a competitiveness. They're for sure, there's stuff off live balls and his breakaway type of speed. There's a tenacity with his defense. You know, I put him on Rogier. We ended up having to put him on Tatum. You know, then there's that team thing. And so, you know, he, he's, he's like a throwback type of player that he just is a tremendous teammate, an incredible competitor, and, uh, you know, the human side of all of us, where you see somebody like that do well, uh, I think sure comes out in, in each of us. Coach, center back row, center left back row, Michael Luongo, radio, Associated Press Radio. Um, it seemed like this game kind of mirror image the last few games of the of the season where you took some shots early and then you guys found a way to kind of take over the second half tonight. Just talk about the way you guys kind of, again, took those shots early and uh, got it done and took control. I mean, I, I think if you, if you go to the defensive end, I thought we were solid defensively for the most part. I think the volume of threes that ultimately they were able to get up is, is, is still a little bit disturbing. I think our first shot defense to hold them to however many offensive rebounds they ended up at, I don't believe it was many, you know, six. Like, that's a good commitment. And so when there was an abundance of rebounds to get, our first shot defense was pretty good. And, uh, you know, I think the attention to the three-point line is always on my mind. Offensively, the thing I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm most pleased with and most stood out is if you look at like the distribution of shots and you look at 24 assists on 38 made baskets in a relatively low scoring game, and then you say you really didn't have that many turnovers, like those things alone um, are impressive for us because, you know, sometimes in the past they have haunted us. That's how I see the game, you know, and in the, uh, in the light of day. Brett, Sarah Todd, Philadelphia Inquirer, Philly.com. What did you see that allowed Dario to get going tonight in a way that he hadn't in the previous three? I mean, he made some long twos. I think there was a toughness, you know, not, not did that dissimilar to TJ. You know, when you start looking, he was 9 for 17, you know, 8 rebounds, 4 assists, you know, just solid. And uh, there were lots of similar things that I just would have – declared about TJ that you could equally say about Dario. And uh, those types of people that, that, that care for their teammates, that are proud to be a Philadelphia 76er, it means something. It means something. Are priceless. Are priceless. And, and both of those guys tonight uh, really showed, I think, that type of spirit. John Marks, Boston Globe. Were you a little more eager to go inside and not necessarily Keep taking threes and just try to work more in the paint and get whether it's Ben or uh, or Joel or not, not as much go for the threes. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, we were. Uh, we we hoped that that would equal a three, though. You know, maybe if you went inside, you could like collapse their defense and 
and, and you know, more threes could be generated. They, they are an elite defensive team. And, you know, positionally, they are an A-plus to me, and they are versatile in a way that we haven't experienced uh, this year. We feel every bit of every offensive possession where you're wondering, how are you going to score, really? And, you know, Joel at times ends up the most obvious answer. But, you know, Baines and, and, and Al especially have done a great job. And so we try to, you know, go inside as much to generate some threes as you, you would to just simply go inside. Uh, Brett, um, Martin Frank, Delaware News Journal, over here. here. Right here. <laughs> I, know, I know you talked about um, why you decided to start TJ, but when, when did you decide to start him and, and when did you tell him? I mean, over the, over the course of the past, what is it, 48 hours, you know, since we lost game three, you know, you, you, you understand that there is no more wiggle room. You, you know, like you, you lose and you, your season is done. And that, that's a daunting statement for all of us because the group is close together. We feel like we have more to give. And we're, we're fighting, you know, like we want to stay alive. And when you started assessing, like, where are the problems? There are some problems matchup-wise that we start the game with. You're always wondering who has Rogier, as an example. And I think that Brad and the Celtics do a good job of finding a mismatch and punishing that. So it was born out of a defensive thing as much as anything, certainly a spirit thing, as I have said. But the decision would have happened probably 24 hours, I'd say, after we lost game three. I told him before the game, I told Cub before the game, once we were all sort of secure as a staff of what that means, and uh, off we went. Uh, Brent, you're right, Rohan at Carney Sports Lister. I think there were something like 95 possessions in this game. Is that a pace you're comfortable with, or would you like to see your guys running more like you were in the first round or end of the regular season? I mean, I still think pace is who we are. You know, toward the end of a game, you know, you, I'm trying to manage it a little bit when you have that lead. You know, I thought it was actually a good experience for Ben to, to we knew they had found him, to go to the line and, you know, shoot, he was seven for eight from the line. I felt the game was in the balance. You know, I felt like we were going to win the game. I didn't feel like I was hurting the team. And so he was able to get some more, you know, free throws. In that period of time, we did slow it down. But in general, it's not who we are. You know, I, I hope to play fast. I really hope to play fast. And uh, somewhere in the middle, you know, we got Joel and it's the playoffs. I hope to walk that line, you know, responsibly. Brett, Marshall Harris here, WIP, front and center, sorry. Uh, you, you made the decision to start TJ. It obviously worked out for this game. Is that something you're going to just completely reassess, or will you just roll with that for the next game? How, how are you looking at that? I mean, you'd think we'd go with it, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think I'd be shocking Brad with that declaration and, like, showing my hand. But you'd think so, Marshall. Like, you know, we'll all go back and talk about it. I don't think it's gimmicky. I think it's real. And uh, I would suspect that we would. And how, how, how did Robert Covington handle that news? And what did you think about his play tonight compared to maybe the first three games of the series? He handled, he handled, he's an amazing, he's an amazing teammate. Like a genuinely good person. And he handled it like I knew that he would. Incredibly supportive, whatever it takes to win. You know, we, we came to this building with our bags. We're leaving tonight. Everybody packed their bags with the mindset that we're going to win and we're going to fly to Boston. And Robert Covington, you know, sort of epitomized that spirit. You know, when I'm watching him on the bench and interacting with TJ once he learned the news, I thought Cov tonight defensively was excellent. I think he had, what, four assists. You know, when I look at it, I thought he, he was really good in areas that, you know, others might not pay attention to. He's a great teammate. He, he's, he's one of ours, has been one of ours for a very long time. And a little bit like Dario and uh, TJ, he, uh, he loves being a Philadelphia 76er. Uh, Brett, Bob Ford, when, right in the middle. When you, when you trap 
and the double as much as you did. You run the risk, obviously, of a good passing team finding the open guy for these shots. You said you were a little concerned about the volume of threes they got. Yeah. Did you feel that was just a necessary risk, given where you were, to increase the aggressiveness on them? I, I think so, Bob. Like when, when we look at, and I'll use TJ as an example, we, we need to come in with a spirit. We need to come in with a tenacity. TJ epitomizes that, so we start him. To declare that to a team and you're fighting for your life, to then be able to put him in an environment that lets him do it makes more sense to me as a coach. You can't do it a lot, but to put him in an aggressive mindset in an aggressive uh, defensive format and deliver the message that I have just said, it equals something. And uh, the risk-reward of them you know, splitting a trap or passing out of a trap and playing effectively four on three behind that there is some truth to what you said, but we felt like it tilted more on, on, on the risk that we had to take to, to get the reward we got. And, uh, you know, that was the decision behind doing that. Covington's been down for much of this series on both ends of the court. How important is it to get him back up, and how do you go about doing that? He is, Derek, and he, he, he has been, you know, down. I think he's been steady defensively, but your point him being a little bit down offensively is, is true. I, I feel like I feel like the the game, you know, sort of finds him as as opposed to like him finding the game. I, I don't really. If you see me walking around on the sidelines with my call sheets, it's not like I'm. I have one play for Robert. You know, I re and I really don't like go out of my way to call a play for Robert. He's the recipient of a lot of other action, and I think just the notion that. That isn't what what really you know we need. We need you to guard. We need you to run your lane. I feel like when when Ben Simmons and look at Ben's defensive rebounding numbers, that's our fast break. It's the hardest fast break I think to guard somebody that can rebound and take off. And you know I hope in that environment if Ben can duplicate like 12 defensive rebounds, Cove filling a lane is one example that I hope to find him in early offense in. When it becomes a half-court game, it's clear that they're playing his stomach. It's clear they're trying to bend him over. It's clear they're trying to force him to be a dribbler. And they're good. And they're athletic. And so somewhere with all that, we, I, I think I can help him if we focus, especially in early offensive stuff.